what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm Oda J and we are locked in this is episode 10 of the wonder years and all of these shows are having these huge breaks and it's like you forgetting what's happening but if you don't remember the last episode dean's brother actually came home for the holidays we know he was over at the war he came back he got to spend it with the family just to turn out <sighs> he's re-enlisting and he might have to go back to Vietnam. So here we are, episode 10. But before we get into this episode, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of it. Hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. Now, Dean is still a young man trying to find his way in the world. This show is called Lads and the Ladies and Us. So we're going to see where we go with here. And hopefully he gets his uh, crush Kessa back. So let's jump into it. Episode 10 of The Wonder Years. We start off with Dean talking about when they were younger and how much that their parents invested into them, especially Lillian, the mom. Now, she played with all of the kids the same way, but there was also a closer bond with her and Kim, her daughter. Of course, that's naturally going to happen. The two girls, they're going to be able to play with T sets and stuff. Dean talking about they end up breaking that T set wrestling around. But as they got older, you start to see this and it goes for for males and females when we get in our teenage years. Now, boys they tend to not challenge their father now kim on the other hand her and lillian they get to argue and they were so close when they were younger now she's older she's arguing about the curfew what clothes to wear and it's because they're just alike she grew up emulating lillian now dean doesn't understand what's going on you see papa dean bill he's at the table he's like yeah this is going to happen so he just lets them argue but dean's like man it's crazy they act just alike and they look at dean like just alike Kim and Lillian, they continue to argue. And Dean's just looking at it. He said, I learned to be like my dad and just stay out of it. Now, I have two older sisters, Tanika and Sharice. And I know exactly what Dean is going through. Because I'm five years younger than the younger one. And then 11 years older than my older sister, R.I.P. Tanika. But Kim is in here arguing with her mom because she doesn't want to go to college. She missed an appointment with a recruiter. And the mom is on her. And what does she do? Dean, you better get your daughter. And you know whenever a parent tells another parent to get their kid... Yeah, it's a, a lot of trouble around the corner. Now, <laughs> Kim, she storms off and slams the door. And that's why we're in the hallway and the door is off the door hinge because it ain't going to be no slamming up in this house. We've all been here before. The parents had their friends over. They're playing cards. You got your friends over and they call you out the room to do something. Oh, give me a drink. Give me the remote. And they're closer to it. But you know not to say nothing. It's just go do it and get back to the room. Get away from the grow folks. Now, Coach Long, he's over here with his wife, and they're just joking around about Lillian taking the doors off because of the slamming thing. Now, this is where they talk about the lads and the ladies, and they're saying that they're going to send their son there, Corey, because this is going to give him a chance to get that etiquette, you know, and be a little bit proper. Now, Bill's saying we thought about that, but we don't know if we were really fit in with the lads and the ladies. And I know if I'm in the kitchen hearing this, I'm like, I do not want to go to that. <laughs> this episode is very touching because before they get ready to head to lads and ladies, which I said I wouldn't have wanted to go to because we got to put on a vest, a button down as a kid. I hated it. But you know how your parents are. They're giving you that talk. Be proper. Touch up on this. How are you dressed like this? They want you to be something you aren't. Now, as a kid, that that just isn't us. As an adult, we know there's a time and a place to be professional and everything. On here, I'm just in T-shirts because we relaxing people. But you see them over here and Dean's like, man, here we go. Now, Lillian, she's kind of nervous to meet the lady of the house. And that's because you want to make a good impression with them. You know, whoever's hosting the event, you want to go over there and talk to them. Now, when they finally get over there to be introduced to them, Kim, she's going to be on her best behavior. But in the words of Dean, she's still going to find a way to embarrass her mom on purpose. So when she goes over there, she does the nice to meet you like she's a princess or something. And everybody's looking <laughs> And Lillian is upset. Like, stand up, please stand up. Now, Miss Long is trying to vouch for Lillian because what do we know about Lillian? She has a degree. She has a good job. She's an accountant at the Department of Treasury. And now the lady is asking, where have I seen you at any of these meetings? Because you got to remember back in the 60s, most women's didn't, <laughs> women's, most women didn't have degrees. So what they did was they took care of the household and they went to all these other meetings. Now, on the other hand, Lillian, she doesn't go to any of these meetings because they're doing the daytime and she's working. Now, what Miss Long does is say, I'm working on my MRS degree, talking about she's married. Now, that's where Lillian can relate and you bring her in, even though you can tell Lillian isn't really feeling comfortable because this isn't her type of scene. She's a businesswoman. 
she's still going to be here because she's doing this for her kids. Dean gets here and he's looking around. He's like, man, where is Corey at? Because I don't know what to say to these kids. But it turns out Corey feels the same way. So that's how <laughs> that's how it always is. When you get to a new place, you're like, man, let me see if I know anybody so I can at least talk to somebody. Because, you know, you're going to have a conversation that y'all have. And you're more relaxed. And when they get over here, these kids are talking about what Time Magazine was talking about. And let me tell you something. As a kid, I wasn't reading no Time Magazine. My dad used to try to have us read the newspaper. And when I tell you that was the most boring. Uh, I just want to be a kid, Dad. <laughs> I know that's exactly what Dean is thinking. Luckily for Dean, we know he's in the science. Now, Corey's like, oh, shoot, my boy Dean, you know what I'm saying? He know about, you know, a little something about science. And Dean, he's winning over the crowd because he's talking about, I can make a stink bomb out of the set. Now, he has a new chemistry set, and they said it's supposed to be for 16 years old and older. Now, the little girl talking about, that's just what the government puts on there. But Dean's like, well, listen up, y'all. I can tell y'all a few things. Learn you something. Now, the kids ask Dean, are you going to the planetarium with us? For him, he's like, man, I got a crew of people that are going to listen to me. Oh, yeah. Let me go make sure I can get mom on the board with this. Now, when he gets there, he wants to talk to Kim and say, hey, Kim, I'll do your chores if you can convince mom that we want to go to every lads and ladies event. She's like, oh, yeah. And he's thinking that was a little too easy. Well, that's because Kim has met some young black people that are supposed to be going to college. The HBCU, Howard, I think they said it was. And she's like, oh, progressive African-American studies. And they talking about, yeah, it's more of a takeover. So she's like, yeah, I want to go to this, too. And if I do decide to go to college, I want to go to a school like that. Now, everybody's seeming to fit in except for Lillian. Bill, he's over here talking about he played with Nat King Cone. He got a song on the radio. So the guy's like, oh, you lying. They like, nah, 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 you ain't lying. Bill do his thing. So the guy gives him a card talking about there's a club in Alabama looking for a nice little band. Dean comes over is like, uh, Dad, Mom said it's time to go. So Bill's out here networking. Dean's out here networking. Kim's out here networking. We still got to see with Lillian <laughs> if she's fitting in or just going along. I knew Lillian was going to be having a hard time over there. But she's talking about, you hear her talking about good hair? How's anybody going to have good hair out in this humidity? And Miss Long talking about, I see a lot of milk chocolate in here. Not a lot of dark chocolate in, you know. So it looked like they're... They're bringing in the lighter skin family. And that's why she said she had good hair out here. It was withstanding the humidity. But we don't care because we love some chocolate over here. Hell, I like milk chocolate too. But, you know, it is what it is. Bill comes over and he's been having a good time because they heard his song. They're like, hey, man, we look out for the last ladies families over here. He's like, ooh, I'm liking this here. Now, Lillian, on the other hand, she's telling them. Yeah, it's not like they brought out the brown paper bag. Now, you know, they used to bring out the brown paper bag and it was a little thing where if you were lighter than this, you were good. If you were darker than this, like, eh, we don't really want to mess with you. Now, it's unfortunate because I am black, 100 percent. Well, I won't say 100 percent black, but I am black. My parents are just lighter skin, but I have no issues with anybody. But Bill's like, man, I like this. And Lillian's doing exactly what I said she was going to do. She's going to stick it out because she wants what's best for her kids. Even if that means, you know, she may not feel like she's accepted. Her kids are being accepted and they're allowed to do certain things that they weren't provided outside of lads and ladies. Miss Long shows up and she's talking to Lily. Hey, you ready for this luncheon tomorrow for the moms? She's like, oh, I, I didn't know nothing about it. So she's saying, let me go talk to Dorothy. Maybe it's a misunderstanding. They didn't get it to you. But Lillian, she kind of knows that, you know, she wasn't in there. And it's not because she's a darker woman. It's probably because she just isn't the, the housewife like they are. And you, that's what it really is. Because Miss Long got in and she's like, well, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and go without me. She looks at Lillian like, I was going to go <laughs> with or without you. She, she was like, I know, I know. Corey telling Dean, hey, man, I felt a little bit left out about the planets thing. So I've been studying. He's talking about, you know, Pluto is so far that the sun just like a regular star from there. And also there's a library around the house. Dean's like, L let me handle all this. You be <laughs> you handle the sports. I got this. And Corey, like, if there's a cute girl, hey, I'm bringing out that Pluto stuff. And earlier, Dean did say he was right back then saying Pluto was a planet, one of the eight but nowadays they don't even classify pluto as a planet anymore so it's seven but Corey was right back then now dean promised the kids a stink bomb this fool brings it in the planetarium with him and the kid next to him like, oh man cool man let me see that and of course you already know what happened they didn't drop it on the floor same time Corey over here trying to tell the girl did you know pluto is so far out that 
He starts smelling himself, and all the kids have to run up out of here. This stink bomb that went off, and it's funky. I was dead on, and they weren't discriminating against her for being a darker-skinned woman because they had darker-skinned women in their chapter of Lads and Ladies. But Lillian has a job, and I keep telling you that in the 60s, most of these women, they didn't have jobs. They were housewives, and they were at the house all day, and they were able to participate in these little outings that they would take the kids on. So that's what she's saying. Well, there is a dinner, but we didn't know if you would be able to make it or not. You know, we wouldn't want you to take off work. We haven't had many like you, you know, with careers. But Lillian is saying, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that my kids are good. So she says, well, the actual voting for our chapter isn't until after the spring event and it's in the evening. So you should be able to make it. So this is good for Lillian. She's going to show that she's worth being in this and she'll be able to make the time for her kids to be in the lads and ladies. Dean and Kim kind of figure out that they aren't the reason that they might not get accepted into lads and ladies. And it turns out it's Lillian. Now she's in there talking to Bill about it and he's telling the man to hell with him. If they don't want you in it, then forget about it. There's other things we can do. Now, Dean, he's also taking the advice that his mom used to give him when people didn't like him. She said, show him why you're special, Dean. And that's what he's telling his mom now. So she's saying, I still want the best possible outcome for you guys. So I'm gonna do whatever it takes. And they like, thanks mom, for real. All right, Kim, go change that dress and let's get ready for this spring Met Gala. Dorothy's up there introducing it. We got Dean and them over there playing <laughs> sword fighting with the forks and the knife. Lily like, hey, boy, if you don't cut that out. They're introducing all the young ladies that are going to be in Lad and Ladies. Now, everyone's coming out with nice dresses on. They're doing their little waves. Hey to the crowd. Then they introduce Kim and she comes out with her mama's business suit on with the afro. Now, you remember Pops told her to change. Well, he didn't tell her to change into this. But what she's doing is standing up for her mom because she is a businesswoman. Now, of course, the parents, they stand up and start clapping because Lillian feels good. Her daughter did something. They're back to being relatable. But during this, you remember the little kid at the planetarium? Yeah, he made a stink bomb, too, and he went ahead and dropped that thing. Now, Kim and Lillian, they back on the same page. They about to go visit Howard University, mm -hmm, HBCU. But on the way, mama has on a tzatziki. Uh-huh. She has on the jacket. She's like, well, we can stop there because it's not the only black school, but you can pick the music. All right, there you go. Episode 10. Let me know what you think about that. Have y'all ever been to anything like the lads and ladies? Unfortunately for me, well, luckily for me, I never did. And I'm glad I didn't. But let me know if you have. And also, do you think that she's going to choose Howard? Let me know what you think. I'm J. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.